Welcome to another episode of Backyard Flight Test. As promised in my Impossible Turn video last week, today we're going to dig into VY compared to Cruise Climb. So stick with me on Flywire. Hi, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to dive a little deeper into the relative energy states of VY and uh, cruise climb speed, cross-checking them with performance metrics. The altitudes I chose to do the engine cuts in last week's video were based on being able to turn back 180 degrees, not including the extra turn needed to line up with the runway. The altitude came from previous tests and videos that I've done and those videos are all linked below in my impossible turn playlist so check it out see what you think the point of last week's video was to determine the energy state at engine cut for various climb speeds and the energy loss in the turn the loss in the turn a lot of folks were expecting a more more discussion on vy and cruise climb and all that in one video was tmi I saved the comparison for today's video, and that's what we're going to compare today, VY and cruise climb. Uh, the performance during the climb as well as the turn back. For the turn, turn radius and energy state will also be uh, compared between the two speeds with an airspeed twist thrown in. Okay, before I get into the data, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit more about the equation that governs here, okay? So energy total prime is, is equal to velocity squared divided by two plus gravity times the height, the altitude, okay? You can't really look at energy states as either kinetic or potential. We're flying, okay? We're a, 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 an object flying in the air, so every data point is a combination of the two. A lot of folks commenting on the video say that VY is the best speed to fly because it gets you higher faster. My contention is, is that that's not true from a total energy perspective, and I think that's the only one that counts. And frankly, you cannot separate the two sections of the equation from the total. At every data point in time or altitude, you have a kinetic and a potential component. And I'm gonna think we're, I think we'll see that in the video. A few commenters opined that I needed to look at uh, speeds at the same altitudes to make it an apples to apples comparison. I see some merit in that suggestion, but two issue issues arise. One is 33 Charlie's in the avionics shop this week, and I couldn't uh, refly it if I wanted to. But two, I think that we can see the relative performance that with the data I have, that's my plan, it was my plan. I think that we can see it. It's not magic or rocket science, and the altitude doesn't make any difference. Is what's the performance? We can just look at a, at a section in time, okay? So just to remind you of the baseline we're looking at here is VX, VY, and cruise climb, and I established a bunch of different points to look at, and then I've got the one-second data, all right? So um, one thing, though, is, is that the, this, the, this equation doesn't take a, into account acceleration time, and that's precisely why I talked about average climb and descent rates instead of specific ones. All right, so we look at this difference here. This is uh, VX, VY, and uh, cruise climb. That's the kinetic energy, and we can see the potential energy is the same. It's all at 500 feet AGL, and the difference here is this is cruise climb. It is significantly more than uh, what uh, VY is, and in fact, it's 24% better, and it's 93% more than uh, the, the VX climb. Okay, so um, yeah, you can climb, you can use VX, you can v use VY, uh, or you can use V Cruise Climb for that matter, but you cannot claim that VY is better than Cruise Climb in all respects because it isn't. Right there tells you that. It's just not. I do want to get on my soapbox for a second and say that VX speed is only good for clearing obstacles, say, 50 to 100 feet. Uh, after that, it's nothing but risk for your, if your engine fails. Don't use it for anything else. Clear an obstacle and then accelerate. Okay, enough of that. Off the box. What I'm trying to do is convince you that a higher energy state is better overall than a lower energy state. Back in my fighter days, we had a saying that speed is life. And I think that holds true for piston engine singles as well as jets. Okay? More speed gives you more options, and uh, options equal survivability. 
Uh, there is a vocal cohort, that's a cohort uh, of viewers uh, that will say, aha, but you haven't shown the performance advantage of VY that confers, that VY confers with higher altitudes attained faster. Yeah, that's true. That's what we're going to do right now. In the simple safe video, again, I only had time to talk about total energy and energy loss in the turn. That's what I want to establish. Today, we're going to compare performance metrics in the climb and the turn. So that's going to be the exciting point. I've got the one second data from the G3X for these events, uh, but I'm only going to talk about five points in time. Okay, we're going to talk about the, that's how we're going to compare altitude achieved by each climb technique and look at the difference between them, okay, and the trends that, if there are any. Okay, so by looking at that time to climb, where are we? We take a snapshot of, of variables. It's not altitudes that, you know, that we're targeting. It's what can we accomplish. By the way, do you know the difference between a technique and a procedure? A procedure is written in blood based on physical limits discovered by people in flight uh, by accident, they pay the price, or by flight test. A technique is a way to accomplish a maneuver or a task that doesn't break procedure. Just because you like your technique doesn't mean that it rises to the level of a procedure. Okay, so let's talk about uh, VX and VY. So here we have uh, VY, this is the altitude in the climb. At, uh, the, these are the altitudes I started at and my target. Okay, so that's our baseline, 2397. After that, we can figure out what our ground level is. That's our ground level. At 15 seconds, uh, the VY was 182 feet above the ground. At 20 seconds, it's 265 feet. 30 seconds, 414. 45 seconds, it's 731 feet above the ground. And at 49 seconds, uh, it's 817 feet above the ground. Faster you go, the faster you go faster. Okay, pretty cool. That's what VY does for us. All right, so let's see what Cruise Climb does. Uh, cruise Climb gives us 102 feet at uh, 15 seconds, 189 feet at 20, 359 feet at 30, four, 551 feet at 45 seconds, and then at 49 seconds, it's 669 feet. Okay, what are those differences? VY is 80, 80 feet higher at 15, 76 at 20, 55 feet higher at 30 seconds, 180 feet at 45 seconds, and 49 feet at seconds, it's 148 uh, feet. All right, so the trend here is, is that V cruise climb is converging with VY. Okay, so that's a very small difference, which is fine because that's the acceleration technique I was using. So I would expect that, uh, I would expect that, frankly. Okay, that's not necessarily the technique I use, but I, what I wanted to do was do the same acceleration technique between all three events, so we didn't have too many variables there. Uh, so, um, but, so what happened there between 30 seconds and 45? All right, that's where I continued to accelerate the cruise climb speed. So uh, that cost me time to climb. In other words, I didn't, I wasn't doing a whole lot of climbing, I was doing accelerating, and that's what gave the, uh, this is the VY advantage right here uh, for that point in time. At 45 seconds, it had a 538.2 uh, potential energy prime uh, units uh, more than cruise climb, okay? But you can see that by four seconds later, just four seconds later, that's already dropped considerably. And uh, so what I think from these trends that we can see is, is that can, if we continue this to 1,100 feet, what we'd see is a convergence. Okay, so in other words, VY doesn't give you a large uh, delta, uh, a, a very large difference, okay? In fact, there's only a 70, and the average, if you take the average climb rates for cruise climb and VY, uh, VY is only 70 feet per minute more. That's 7%, okay? Usually when you look at uh, significance, it's got to be more than 10%, so that's not that much. And... Uh, I think that's the significant thing here. Okay, so now we look at speed differences. I talked about those. The VY, by the way, my target was I wanted to climb uh, at, uh, I mean, I wanted to do the descent at best glide because most people think about best glide as the speed where uh, if you have an engine failure, that's your target speed. Best glide, best glide, best glide. Okay, my contention, if you watch my videos, is I don't talk about that. I talk about men sync. I talk about best glide for going someplace and men sync for minimi or maximizing my time in the air. Okay?
Best glide is maximizing distance. Men sink is maximizing time in the air. And that's the uh, important point here. And when we look at it, does the, most POHs have this in their, in their uh, most airplanes have this in their POH? And I would say no. But in the beach POH, this is for the F-33A and C. Okay, it covers my airplane. Maximum glide configuration, okay? So we're engine out situation. We want to go as far as we can. We want to do all these things. And that's our best glide speed. Flyer best glide speed is 105, okay? And that will give you uh, the, the best you can do is 1.7 nautical miles per 1,000 feet of altitude, okay? Um, if you're able to pull the propeller back to low RPM at best glide speed, you get about 1,000 feet per minute descent. If you're not able to do it and you leave it uh, fine, uh, that's about 1,500 feet per minute difference. That's 30 per... That's 30 percent. That's considerable. It's a big difference. Okay, so I've been talking about this min sink speed. Where's that? Well, it so happens that Beach put it in here. They call it a landing without power or an emergency approach speed. And they say establish 78 to 83 knots when assured of reaching the landing site selected. And they say and on final approach, I say fooey on that. Uh, if I've made the uh, site where I'm going to be, I want to maximize my time because it's time and maneuvers that I have to worry about here. Okay, so uh, to get in a position to land in that field. So 78 to 83 knots, I find that hard to deal with. Okay, so I'm light, I'm at 78. I'm heavy, I'm at 83. I just cut the, in the middle and I say it's 80 to 81 knots, something like that. And that's what I'm going to use for this, okay, for my target speed. So in VY, I used best glide speed. We'll see if how, how the, uh, out, what it impacted us on altitude. And uh, for the V cruise climb, I used min sink speed. Okay, these are the start points. Uh, it was an airborne start, so you can't be perfect, or I can't be perfect about it, but it was pretty close uh, in time and place. These are the turns. This is the VY turn here, and this is the cruise climb turn here. So when we hit 800 feet, at uh, 96 knots, we started our, uh, uh, our engine cut, and I went to best glide speed, overshot a little bit, but then I was back on it. And at 180 degree point, it uh, took 27 seconds, 700 feet is, and, and to get to the 180 degree point. So I had 100, 100 feet above the ground. Uh, 100 feet above the ground is nothing. There's no maneuvering. There's just, I'm picking a spot and I'm landing there, okay? Um, so the cruise climb, I had to accelerate, and that took extra time straight ahead, and that's where we get the difference. The turns, I will suggest, are very, very similar, but the, with the differences, okay, I'm climbing at best uh, my cruise climb speed, and then uh, I have the engine cut, and now my target speed is going to be closer to uh, the 81 knots that I'm, I'm looking for, but I don't achieve it right away. What I do is it takes 23 seconds to make the turn and 680 feet. So the altitude's about the same, but I turn faster, and that gives me a shorter turn radius, and I can do that because I have more energy. <laughs> That's it. I'm pretty close. I'm working on uh, way too much energy, and the cruise climb here, so, I mean the, the, uh, best, the best glide target speed here. Uh, so that's the difference is uh, maybe what I should do is, is do this turn again in VY at my best, uh, at my min sink speed or my, my landing without power speed to see what the difference is in altitude loss. I would say it might be two, 300 feet. So I'm going to be in the 400 range instead of the 500 foot range. Okay. And I would be closer to the airport. But I want you to see that in this particular case, the airport's down here. It's off screen. In neither one of these turns would I make it back to the runway. I, I just wouldn't. It's just a reality of it. I didn't want to caveat uh, the acceleration technique that I used is not one I normally use, uh, uh, but I wanted the, the test to be consistent between all three speeds, and, uh, all about the acceleration and the gear retraction to be the same, so I didn't have that as a variable uh, to worry about, just the, uh, the speeds that I was flying in the turn. Uh, but the next video, I'm going to take a deeper dive into gear retraction and the commonly used technique of holding your gear until there isn't any runway below you. I haven't even run those numbers yet, so stay tuned. All right, so what's the takeaway uh, from this uh, experiment? Uh, flying cruise climb uh, doesn't really cost much in the way of altitude as compared to VY. I think faster is better, okay? 
VY just didn't result in a significant altitude margin above that attained by a cruise climb. Additionally, the speed that the cruise climb it had uh, gave us uh, allowed a tighter turn and a higher altitude at the 180 degree point. Speed equals options. That's the key. Best glide is not the speed to fly. And I think this is probably controversial for some because everybody talks about engine, engine failure, go to best glide. It is not the total solution. Um, it's, the, it's the solution to get someplace. I think it's pref more preferable to fly something closer to men's spink men sink with enough energy to flare for the landing, okay? So that's the, uh, that's the issue there. Lowering the gear would have resulted in an additional altitude loss if I'd done that at any point, and a higher wing-loaded airplane will li not likely make it back to the runway, okay? Like a Bonanza, or in this case, the Cardinal uh, that had the accident at the beginning of October uh, in trying to return to the runway. Lowering the gear probably made the difference between I ju they just barely made the plateau uh, or they were 15 feet short. And frankly, almost made it doesn't count. It just doesn't. Um, so higher wing loading, you gotta be cognizant of that. What are your turn points? If you think you can do the turn back, then practice it. Start at altitude, try it on actual takeoffs, I highly recommend that you disconnect the turn back exercise from the landing exercise. This is where snap judgments can end your flying career abruptly. Don't terminate your chances to keep breathing. Set a knock it off altitude and do the turn back. And when you hit the altitude, go around, period, dot. Don't try to land. Don't think, okay, this works out great. I'm gonna go ahead and land. No, use that as a, a do not descend below this altitude. Trying to do the whole enchilada at the same time ups the risk factor enormously. If you don't want to practice that, fine, don't do it. Pick a place, if you have an engine failure, pick a place in front of you. Go to your min-sync speed or something near it, uh, and don't be a hero. Always remember that your airplane's job is to keep you and your packs alive. If the airplane is reusable afterwards, great. If it's not, it's not the goal to keep it alive, it's to keep you alive. And uh, gear up if you can do that. The physics of the turn back, one more thing I want to talk about here. The physics of the turn back uh, is not affected by the runway of the environment uh, that you took off from. The turn is the turn. You have to adapt your decision points to accommodate your location, the airport you're using from. Depart from with, a, with a 45 degree turn, or maybe go downwind. Departure, stay close to the runway before flying over the uh, terrain, whatever it might be, rooftops, freeways, whatever, or maybe circle overhead the field. That's what I commonly do in high density altitude situations. Keep in mind your glide distance and don't depend on making book numbers because it's probably not going to happen in the heat of the moment. Quite often I see folks make a intersection departure from long runways. That totally negates the advantage of having a long runway to begin with. If you used a 10,000 foot runway, you know, and it takes maybe a mile from takeoff until you've climbed to your turn back altitude, well, you'd still be over the runway if you, if you didn't do an intersection departure. I don't know why you'd give that up. I just don't. What we're talking about here is aeronautical decision making. Takeoff decisions. Is this risk doing the maneuver this particular way? I think a safe approach is to mitigate risk as much as is reasonably possible, and every phase of flight is a little bit different, so you look at it for that phase of flight. I hope you enjoyed the video. Even more that I hope you learned something from it, and I'd like to know what technique you're gonna use, uh, you plan to use going forward, so leave me a comment below, I appreciate it. It's kind of the forum that we can use to discuss this, this kind of a thing, I'm curious. So if you like video, uh, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. It looks like this, a bit like this here. Uh, I'd also like to thank my Patreon supporters here. I do appreciate your support. And by the way, I'm posting a big metal box update. I think you're gonna like it this weekend. Uh, that's when I'm posting it. And it's only private content for uh, Patreon supporters. So thanks for supporting me. Keep flying and I'll see you next time on Flywire.